the love and concern. And after I came to Taiwan and left my old friends and family uh, two years ago, um, the value of birthday and the meaning of it still hasn't changed. And one significant reason of that is because a group of new friends that I met um, during the beginning of my freshman year, they are eight girls who also come from Hong Kong and Macau. And we all have very different personalities and we, all, and we are all in different faculties, but still we support each other while we are all following them. And this kind of relationship is just so special to me. And also, um, despite the fact that we seldom see each other because we are all very busy, we will try our best to celebrate each other's birthday, um, to take turns celebrating each of our birthday um, by preparing a cake and then rushing in that person's room at 12 at midnight and to give that kind of surprise, which is actually not very surprising because it is very predictable. And, uh, and this whole experience um, has given me so much more and it makes me so happy. And it has become something that I look forward to when it becomes my birthday. And it is very sad when um, the old saying that goes, um, the more the expectation, the more the disappointment. And last Sunday was my 20th birthday. And so I, um, like what we all did in the past two years, because we have already celebrated like um, 14 times of birthday. And I would expect them maybe to <coughs> celebrate my birthday. And so at that night, at 12 o'clock, I started to wait. <laughs> but then none of, them, none, none of them show up. And I thought it's okay because we are all very busy and it's the new time is coming. And Never mind, because um, the day still has 24 hours, so I can wait until <laughs> So it becomes um, my, um, this is daytime, so it's my birthday. And then I still kept waiting, but because I, I believe that they will all come, because it's like a tradition of some sort of habit, and we all still have very good relationships. But then I started to wait and wait, and then it was like, about 11 o'clock at night, <laughs> but still none of them show up. And then it kind of, uh, but I thought it's okay, maybe it's some kind of surprise. <laughs> and um, and what the fact is that one of my roommates is also um, in that room. And I saw her acting very strange and very worried that night. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm the one that doesn't really like surprise and I want to know the truth and despite I don't care what is the truth. So I asked my roommate that, oh, um, when are they going to come or like, um, can you show, can you show me uh, your conversation because we will often, you know, open a conversation with on the dumb phone. And at first she was reluctant to do so, but then I kind of backed her and then she showed me. And at that time, I was sort of devastated because I saw something that I really didn't expect to. And which is that um, a few of them didn't talk at all. I think they were very busy. And, and then none of them um, was willing to buy the birthday cake because they find it very really troublesome or something like that. And then, I don't know what they're waiting for, but none of them are willing to come. And they, they're saying, hey, um, maybe when we reach your room, your birthday, uh, her birthday will be over, so maybe we can just um, skip that day, skip that celebration, something like that. And at that time, I thought I'll be okay, because I consider myself as um, to have very high EQ. <laughs> but then, um, um, that's not the truth, because I couldn't really control my emotion at that time, and I was very sad, and I sort of cried a little bit, and I wish they didn't come at that time. But then, um, I don't know why, because maybe they have, um, they felt kind of guilty or something like that, so eventually they still came like 
at around 1 o'clock. But that time, I was trying so hard to fake a smile or to, to pretend that we are having a good atmosphere, but uh, I kind of failed because I think everyone can sense that the atmosphere is kind of weird. But what surprised me is that none of them seemed to care, and they didn't ask what I felt at that time at all. So the whole thing just paused, and we did the regular things. I mean, some of them would say, hey, let's take a picture, and let's make a birthday wish, and something like that. And then they kind of get over very quickly. And but I couldn't forget that, and I, I was kind of depressed for a few days, because I didn't know what to do. And there's an evil inside me. I was thinking that um, maybe it's a time for you to consider them not as those sincere friends. Maybe they are just those friends that you may hang out with uh, for fun at some, some time. But I don't want myself to be cynical or to hate, to start to hate my friends just because it's my friend. And then, in the process of choosing the topic for my speech this time, I was so worried that you might find this very boring. <laughs> and very, um, you, you might, I'm afraid that you might find Sennin is a very troublesome girl. <laughs> 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 because it's maybe it's something that you will forget very quickly. But um, um, so I still, I consider this, uh, choose this as the topic, because I think it somehow has taught me a lesson that to have someone is really effortless. You don't need to, to plan a great deal to hurt someone's feeling, or you may not even recognize you are breaking someone's heart. And what we can do is to try to pay attention to each one's concern. And maybe to me, my birthday is important. To you, it isn't. But still, you can try your best to be happy just for me. And also, I consider writing a speech is kind of like a therapy for me. <laughs> because in the process of writing, I start to look at the whole thing uh, from an outsider angle. And then it comes to me that, um, you know, I attach so much importance to birthdays because I think this is the day that I, I should feel grateful, I should feel lucky for all the love and concern that I have. So there's no reason for me to hate someone. Because just because you don't have a wife doesn't mean that you're unfortunate. And then a quote popped up to my mind, which says, he thought, do not let the world make you hard. Do not let pain make you hate. And do not let the bitterness steal your spirit. And I think that's something I would like to do. And even though they may forget my birthday, but I was still, um, wholeheartedly and sincerely to celebrate each of them's birthdays in the future because that's me and I will try to be happy and forgiving um, as I always am. So it's nice to see you.